welcome everybody to another awesome live development streaming for Akira, the Linux UX design tool. Is that the correct tagline? I don't know. Whatever. I can make it up because I created that software. So I can decide whatever it's going to be called. How are you guys doing? Uh, how's everybody doing in this beautiful day? Uh, not really. Uh, it's very cloudy and, and dull and terrible. One of like very common uh, Vancouver Canadian winter day, but it's okay. So uh, today I'm going to show you a lot of a lot of stuff, <laughs> a lot of code, a lot of things. We're gonna try to code something together. I don't know uh, if we'll succeed in our mission to fix a lot of things, but uh, there are a lot of positive notes related to Akira. Um, the current release, like the alpha release, the alpha version, I think it's 0 0.13 or 0 0.14. I don't remember, but the current release has a lot of uh, small uh, quirks, small issues, and um, a little like small things that weren't working properly and we were trying to fix it and patch it. And then at one point I realized this architecture doesn't scale. So this doesn't work. And all the issues and all the, the, the quirkiness and all the strange behavior were caused by the architecture itself, the way we, we did set things up at the beginning. So... I decided to rebuild it from scratch. <laughs> Not the entire application, but the canvas, mostly the canvas, the Goo Canvas implementation, the library, Goo Canvas is the library that we are using to build this thing. And also, uh, I decided to focus a lot on the, uh, the code cleanup or like the um, code convention or like the, the code formatting of things and writing a lot of comments. So I started thinking of like these open source applications shouldn't be hard to understand from a code point of view. Yes, it's a massive application, but it has to be easy to understand. So I started cleaning a lot of things. I started writing a lot of comments to explain why a lot of things were done that way because I also realized like every developer ever that I coded something and after that one year I go back to the same portion of code. I have no idea why I did it that way. So I started writing some very um, clear comments to explain all the decisions. But I see a lot of people already uh, joining in the chat. Hello. Uh, hello, Janshu. Hello, Y YBA. <laughs> Hello, <laughs> why are you crying? Uh, hello, Dan. Hello, Paxi Laxi Fixi. It's always good to see you here, man. Uh, or girl, I don't know, gender, whatever. Uh, Wahidul Islam, uh, all respect to you and to you as well. Thank you so much. But yeah, so um, as usual, I don't know if this setup will work because I'm streaming from my desktop and the webcam is there, but I'm connected through HDMI to an HDMI input card inside the desktop from the System76 laptop, which I have Elementary OS 6 in it. So I am, yeah, we'll see if that works. Let me change this to the coding view. Yeah, you can see that. Yeah, it's beautiful. There's a little bit of delay here, but whatever, it's gonna be fine. Um, so as usual, I'm gonna be talking a bunch and show you as much as possible. And then uh, I'm gonna interrupt some time to take a sip of tea and then read your comments and your questions. So if you have anything to, to ask or any doubt or anything, just write it in the chat. I'm not gonna write it. I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna read it right away, but I'm gonna do it with a little bit of delay. So uh, be aware that I'm gonna read all the comments, but not right away. So the first thing that I want to show you are a bunch of issues that outstanding issues that we, we've been dealing with Akira since pretty much the beginning. So here, the first most common issues that was open a bunch of um, months ago is, as you can see, the fact that text items are not visible when are dragged or when are generated inside the arbor, which is very strange. Um, the other very common issue, and this was like probably the main issue that was driving me crazy. That's why I stopped working on any other feature and implementation was the uh, resizing of rotated items inside the artboard. 
So when you have, and here there's a small GIF of example, when you have uh, an item that it's outside the arbor, you rotate it and you resize it, it resize it properly, translate it, but if when it's inside the arbor, it kind of like, it feels like it's squishing the edges and it's not accounting for the rotation. At this, I realized that this is an issue of our arbor implementation because Goo Canvas, the, the Goo Canvas library, or Cairo, uh, all these like GTK libraries, they don't have, they don't come with the standard concept of an artboard. They come with groups. Like it's it's possible in Goo Canvas to create groups and, and manage all the items grouped inside one single groups all together. But the concept of an artboard, it's kind of, it's a bit alien. That's why like Inkscape or GIMP uh, or Krita, if I'm not wrong, they don't have artboards because these open source libraries, they don't come with the concept of artboards. And an artboard is, it's very, it's a very unique concept. It's something that yes, it's a group because if you move the artboard, uh, all the items inside the artboard can be moved together, but also the items inside the artboard need, need to be independent from the artboard itself. So you can select, manipulate, and change those items. So the artboard is basically a self-contained canvas that it's inside the canvas. So we created that um, with a little bit of trickery and a little bit of code. I'm gonna show you what we did. So first of all, let me uh, change. Can you see it? It's just to let me know if the font is big enough for you uh, to look at this, but uh, we uh, created this. So first of all, if I open the canvas artboard here, this is the canvas artboard in point. Let me zoom a little bit so you can see it. Okay. And then you can read it, right? Uh, the canvas artboard implementation, basically we extended the based uh, interfaces and objects of Goo Canvas. We extended the Canvas item simple, the Canvas item, and then our own model of the Canvas item that has all our custom attributes and uh, all, all these other good stuff. We extended this, we created this custom class, and inside this custom class we started defining all the properties. So we define a fill color RGB, like a white background color. We set our transformation. We created the label because the canvas comes with a label on top with the name. And then we started having a problem because the items inside the canvas needs to be cut from the canvas itself. So let me show you if I compile these. take a little bit because I, I I was working on a completely different thing. Uh, if I create an arbor and I create a, an item and then I drag the item outside the arbor or like close to the edge, you can see it's not rendered because it's outside. If I move the canvas around, the item is still inside and it's good. It follows, but it's independent and it's also cut. So all these things we had to do it manually with Cairo. We had to literally uh, create our own rendered, which is the simple paint. We overwritten, uh, and this is an error order, uh, our board. <laughs> I'm terrible at spelling, but we, we uh, overwritten the simple paint method of the Goo Canvas library, and we implemented our own thing. We created our own, uh, um, label, we created our own, our own basic rectangle at the bottom that follows the height and width and the X and Y of the uh, main group. And then we did this loop for every items that it's inside the canvas, we need to repaint the item, compute the transformation and repaint the item. This was okay, but as you can see, we are basically reinventing the wheel because Goo Canvas and the libraries that we're using already come with these type of things, with these simple paint and with these all these methods that the library takes care of it independently. We shouldn't need to rewrite these things from scratch. And that's why we started having the issues of resizing rotated items or the text not rendering because we were reinventing the wheel and we were implementing properly everything together. And this is one of the main issue of this architecture. The second issue is that we started doing, at the beginning, we decided, okay, we have a bunch of items. There are like the rectangle, the ellipse, the 
image, the text, all these items are canvas items. So they have to be identical on their own because we cannot manage each class for each attributes independently. Everything has to be related to one single interface. And we created this model canvas item interface. And this is an interface that implements a bunch of attributes. All these attributes you can see are abstract. The problem with interfaces, if you know a little bit of programming, like in C or PHP, if you um, are object-oriented programming, when you implement an interface and then when you use an interface, for example, in a canvas rectangle, we use the model canvas item interface, then you have to redeclare all the attributes all the time. And it was starting to get taxing. And I noticed this when a user asked, can I help you out? Can I implement the canvas line or an arrow, whatever, a new object? I said, yeah, you can do it, just extend the interface. And I noticed that he was having a little bit of a hard time because he needed to reuse all the attributes and re-implement all the methods, all those abstract methods, abstract attributes from the canvas item. And it wasn't linear at all. It was very like, why do I need to implement, uh, I don't know, the artboard attributes when an artboard doesn't have an artboard attribute because it, it's the artboard itself, or why do I have to implement the uh, border radius for a circle? And a circle doesn't have a border radius. Why do I have to implement the border radius attribute and set it to uh, false or set it to null when a text item doesn't have a border radius? So that doesn't work, <laughs> that didn't work at all. That's why on uh, GitHub I started, I opened the discussion and I started saying, hey, um, we need to re rethink the canvas item. And I wrote here the problem with the canvas item that not all attributes from the base class are necessary. Some important attributes like X and Y are not directly accessible and unique classes like image and cyborg have substantially different needs and don't leverage most of the shared methods. So there were all these things and the canvas item base interface was getting massive, like very long, hundreds and hundreds of lines of code. It was like hard to maintain. And this is just the alpha, this is just the beginning. And I was starting to think, okay, this is gonna be impossible to manage on the long run. When this application grows and it turns into a very complex application, changing anything will crush all the other uh, related items that leverage this interface. So that's it. And this guy, uh, Don Adigo, or yeah, Don Adigo, Adam, that it's a contributor on the elementary OS um, uh, project, he suggested you should use components, which is great because you have the, his suggestion was you have the base component uh, and then each component takes care of a very small and specific type, sets of attributes. So he gave uh, an example, like you have the transfer component that takes care of X and Y, and then you extend the item or you create a canvas item. In this case, you create the canvas rectangle and then you add the transfer component. So basically, you create each item and for each item you use the components that you need and all the components are separate are just building blocks it's just like lego and i said this is super cool and i want to do it so i did it <laughs> so i started um what is the component property yeah get checkout component property um and I want to show you, there's a, a, you can go check it out if you want already there. There's a work, uh, work in progress pull request called drop inheritance use components, which as you can see from <laughs> the diff here, there are like 2,231 lines of code added and 2,041 lines of code deleted. Basically, by doing this little implementation of, yeah, we should drop inheritance and use components, I started rebuilding the whole application from scratch. And it's gonna, it's awesome, it's awesome. So first of all, the base interface, the canvas item, only has methods that return the component if the component is available. So you have the name method, the transfer method and checks, is this component available? Yes, return and otherwise, because we have a question mark here, it might return null. So 
this canvas item is very self-containerized and only returns the components that are used. Then we have a, for example, we want to create a rectangle. The canvas rectangle has three properties, very streamlined. You have the main class generators where we pass all the attributes and we actually generate the rectangle by setting up X and Y with an height, the initial position, and then we translate the position by the user's decision. And then there you go. This is how we add our preferences. This rectangle has a name as a transformation coordinate, has an opacity, a rotation, fields, border size, flipped property, horizontal, vertical, flipped, border radius, and layer. That's it. Done. And we did exactly the same for all the other. For an ellipse, we generate the ellipse based on what the Goo Canvas requires, and then we add the components. For the artboard, the same, but the artboard is slightly different because the artboard doesn't have the flipped, doesn't have the border the radius, doesn't have the border. So in the artboard, we just implement the name, transform, opacity, fields, size, and layer, and that's it. So it's way easier to implement these things and manage it on the long run. And by doing this, the artboard, as you can see here, the canvas artboard doesn't extend anymore a custom model or a custom uh, uh, base interface. It extends the built-in canvas group. And the canvas group is exactly what we need to manage the artboard. So if I show you, look at this, I'm going to compile. Uh, oh, I already compiled. <laughs> I was too excited. So nothing really changes. <laughs> Everything is it's the same. But if I rotate here and I resize it, look, it works normally like it did before. If I create an artboard and I create an object inside an artboard, I rotate it and I resize it, it resizes it properly and it's inside an artboard. It's cut it outside if I move it around. But you're, you just saw a bug here, which is what we're going to take care of uh, today, but if I create this and I move it, yeah, this is the bug that I was saying, move it, boom, yes. <laughs> and we move it around, um, whatever, it's fine. Let me just put it here, move it around, it moves the, the things together. But that's the bug that uh, we saw now because I recreated everything from scratch, basically. Uh, all the previous methods that were expecting some specific attributes and some specific conditions don't work anymore. So the previous method that was like detecting where the item is set, if this item is inside or outside, uh, just push it outside or keep it inside the artboard. Now it doesn't work. As soon as like put it slightly to the edge, boom, for him it's outside. So I just push it outside, but it duplicates the layer. It doesn't really work well. So there are all these quirkiness that we're gonna work on it today and we're gonna fix it. Um, oh, a lot of comments. Let me grab a sip of tea and then I will answer all your questions. Uh, why you do all your, your videos help, um, your videos so much helpful. Uh, you're very welcome. Hi, hi. Uh, hello, Prad Bean uh, from Nepal. Oh, hi. Oh, awesome. Wow. The other side of the world. That's amazing. How's it going, man? Um, hi, uh, Nasty Gamers. It looks good. Thank you. Uh, Moose43H, can this application work in Windows currently? Currently cannot work in Windows, but is GTK? And as you probably know, Inkscape is built in GTK. This is a, after compiling, this is a C, GTK C application. So uh, it can be compiled and built for Windows. Uh, I don't know how to do it, but since it's open source, if there's a Windows maintainer that wants to compile Akira for Windows, it's possible. It's open source, can be done. Why um, YBA says, yeah, it can't work on Windows right now because whatever. But I think there's a, a user, if I'm not wrong, Felipe, uh, compiled it on on windows and run it on windows <laughs> as a test and it was okay abhishek hey abhishek welcome welcome uh nestor first thanks for akira component is using game development is yes yes uh nestor the components is using game development it's very common used in the, like the unreal engine and it's a very good approach for large and scalable application which i love it 
master as a Ubeka on elementary? Is that elementary or six? Yes, this is elementary or six on my laptop. I'm using the System76 laptop. Uh, I'm a supporter of elementary or six, so I have access to the daily builds. I use it only for Akira development. That's the only thing that I use it for. Uh, so, yeah. <laughs> uh, hi, Mohammed. Muhammad. Yes. Uh, hi, Yasin. Oh, Yasin from Algeria. Hello, Yasin. Uh, I am good. I'm your regular viewer. I'm learning much more from your video. Prabin. Awesome. Awesome to awesome to know. Thank you so much. Okay, let, let's continue. So uh, we need to fix a bunch of shit. <laughs> so the problem there happens in the uh oh actually i want to show you all the components that i did here so here in the library we have the full folder of components and all these components are extendable by any item so if any of you then one day decides to i want to contribute to uh, akira and i want to just uh, create a new item like an hexagon or i want to create a strange shape whatever you can create a new item and extend these components and the components are the for example let's um let's give you a cool component it's like the size component it's generated, has a bunch of properties, for example, the locked, because you can lock the size, or you can lock the size ratio, so you can keep it in place. Um, and then has, of course, width and height, that automatically you can assign those, and the method, the getter and setter method, they take care of getting the actual width from the object itself, or setting it and communicating to the canvas or the entire application, A, hey, the value of an item changed, so adapt to whatever you want. And this thing is self self containerized. That's it. It's it's like seventy lines of code, even less because the first thirty are just comments. So it's like forty lines of code for a component that takes care of the uh, size ratio, the locked size, the width and height, and communicating to the canvas if an object changes. So. That's it. That's amazing. Same thing for the rotation. We generate the rotation, we assign the initial rotation, and then when the rotation changes, we do the calculation. We actually rotate the item within the rotation component, and then we communicate to the canvas, hey, the item changed. That's it's just amazing. <laughs> I love it so much. It's just like so good, right? It's it's beautiful. I it it's so easy. It's baffling that I didn't do it since the beginning because you think, especially from object-oriented programming, you think, okay, uh, a bunch of classes use the same attributes, so I'm gonna create an interface so I can keep track of the same attributes, but that's not scalable at all. Uh, the components part takes a little bit more time to set it up at the beginning, but then it's just smooth to implement. Yeah, so um, so the problems that we have there, it's in the items manager. The items manager is the one that takes care of checking, changing the artboard, yes or no. So the first problem that we have is uh, this method. This method dropped inside, it's wrong. Because the dropped inside is basically always returning false. So when you drop when i drop the item at the edge of the arbor it thinks that this was dropped outside the arbor even if it, the only the edges are outside the arbor so let's check the uh drop inside which is inside the uh canvas arbor if i'm not wrong uh no remove child i said dropped inside yeah, there you go. Drop inside. Help a meta to determine if an item was moved inside on our board. Is drop inside. So is this major of the canvas our board? So we need to check a little bit of math and see if this is good or not. Okay, let's do it. Oh, more questions. Um... Johao, Johao, no, how do you say with a, with a Johao, Fagner, Fagner. <laughs> uh, hi from Brazil. I love your WordPress plugin tutorial. Great work. Thank you so much. Are you a lone developer, Mohamed? Uh, not super alone. The, we have other couple of developers, two or three, that they contribute. Like Alberto 
is uh, Spanish is helping a lot with the maintaining of Goo Canvas. We have Giacomo and then Bilal, other two developers, but they've been dealing with their own private life and work for the past year. So I'm mostly, um, mostly uh, working on this alone, uh, but I have support from the others, so it's not, it's not a problem. Uh, do, 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 do. Okay. Then, uh, uh, Master said, I did a manual upgrade to Elementary S6, but now Super Space uh, um, doesn't open application launcher. Do you have some same issues? Uh, well, Master, it's it's uh, Elementary S6 is still a daily under development release, so you can expect a lot of breakages. I know that the uh, Super Space is the opening of the wing panel. I know that the wing panel is currently slightly busted because they're changing the library names. So uh, expect bustages. It's um, if you have issues, you just go into the GitHub repository, download the wing panel prior to the latest commits and compile it and install it and we'll fix it. Um, but yeah, it's normal. Elementary 6 is not stable, so that's it. Um, any plans for more Valo tutorial? Abhishek, yes, you asked twice. You already asked also here. Uh, yes, uh, I'm uh, right now, as you can see, I'm super focused on uh, Akira and I, I'm trying to do as much as possible. But yeah, new Valo tutorials will definitely come. Uh, bro, you should do a pay course on Valo and GTK development. Uh, no, I prefer to do free videos on YouTube. It's fine. I don't need to get paid to do these things. I enjoy doing free. I think, I honestly think, I believe that education, especially digital education, but the whole, whole type of education should be free and accessible for everyone in the world. Paying to study, it's bullshit. That's it. Uh, can you use this type of components in PHP WordPress plugin development? Uh, I think in PHP, definitely 100% in PHP, you can definitely do it because as an object oriented programming, you can do it. In WordPress, you can't, you could do it, but I don't think will be accepted by the uh, WordPress plugins repository. repository? because they don't accept super uber com complex object oriented programming they more like they prefer linear uh procedural programming i don't know if it makes sense um my man said still in beta still in beta what akira still in alpha akira uh elementary s6 if you're talking about uh probably still in beta i think but yeah um, and Gmail service, I put you in timeout because you were bothering a lot with all your comments to answer your questions, um, to answer your question, elementary US code is, uh, IDE that is being developed to mostly work with Vala. It's basically just to work with Vala. So you can ask them to improve it, or you can contribute, contribute. Contribute, contribute. I don't know the proper <laughs> pronunciation of this to code to make it a better, a better IDE for Vala. But anyway, let's code something here because we need to fix this. So first of all, let's check something like that. So we need to check if this is dropped inside. If this is dropped inside uh, here, let's put a warning. So uh, uh, don't something like don't do anything here. So we know that we're hitting this point. Oops, don't do anything. Uh, but we need to check if the uh, drop inside is returning true, if the item is actually dropped inside. So here, technically it's correct because if the item, uh, the X1 of the item with the topmost right point of the item is inside the canvas bounds, topmost item so it's it's bigger than this it means that it's inside but we'll see we'll see we'll see we can why it's oh this is um okay it was an indentation issue here <laughs> <laughs> oh my god i hate indentation issues 
Okay, so here we can print something, and this is a super easy thing to print in Vala. When you wanna, don't want to debug all, you can uh, eject a warning, which is super easy to do. Um, because we are printing values, these are double values, so are not an integer, not a values, we can use the uh, percentage F uh, placeholder for that. So we can say that the uh, item X1... And then uh, uh, artboard x1, and we put a percentage f, and then we can put the two values that we want to set, the item bounds uh, x1, and then the bounds x1, which it should be the canvas bounds. So by putting percentage f, and then after the comma, this percentage f will be replaced by the first one, and this percentage f will be replaced by the second one. It's pretty standard. It's like printf in PHP. It's like nothing, nothing crazy complicated. But uh, let's do this and let's check. Um, actually, let's check all together. X1. X2. Y1. Y. Y. And then Y2. And then we can write in a way that it's identical to the method, so we can see if this is correct. Arbor, 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 arbor. Okay, let's give it a try. Um, Abhishek, thanks. You are only source of learning GTK and Vala. You're very welcome. Uh, Xarek, uh, I agree. With you, education free, good idea, but people too greedy. Yes, I know. People are greedy as hell. Uh, is there a reason you chose GTK and not QT? Because GTK is fully open source. QT is not uh, fully open source. QT is a proprietary uh, licensed for open source projects. And as you followed probably the, what was last year or some, what years ago, the QT company decided to not release the new version under open source license. So it cannot be used until you purchase a license, which is a super shitty move. Um, and also, yeah, we use the full GNOME GTK um, stack. GTK has built-in bindings for Vala. Vala is the programming language that actually Vala has built-in bindings for GTK. And we use all GTK like GNOME libraries. We use uh, the uh, Goo Canvas, we use uh, libg, we use whatever. All the things are part of GTK, so it's um, it's good. Uh, boop boom. Let's see what we did here. So we have an artboard. We have a uh, boom. Okay, so we got our output here. Don't do anything. That's correct because is was dropped inside. And then the item X, which is 252, it's bigger than 168, which is correct. 168, these are the, the artboard X, one two and y one two are the edges of the artboard so 168 498 195 and 504 are the edges of the artboard and we can confirm it by selecting the artboard 168 and 195 these are the coordinates of the artboard you can see here so the, the rest it's here then the item is two and 375 is smaller than 498 um 283 is Okay, okay, okay. 375. Okay, so the calculations are correct, but the problem is the condition here. The problem is the condition because this is a whole Trudy condition. Because this is all Trudy, all these four conditions have to be through in order to confirm that this was dropped inside. The canvas but this is not correct 
Do you guys know why this is not correct? Can you figure it out? This is not correct because you could have an item that is the top X and Y are outside the canvas, but the bottom X and Y, the, the, the rest of the item is inside the canvas. So we need to maintain that. So all of these, this needs to be equal, equal, equal. No, absolutely. This is not correct. So um, we need to um, make it falsy, not truly. So we need to change these to drop outside and invert this. If this is smaller and this is bigger and this is smaller and this is bigger and instead of draw moved outside an artboard, if this is dropped outside We have the drop inside here and we can board. Why don't we select the other one as well? Okay. And here we change it. Okay. Let's give it a try. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Okay. This is correct because it's same parent. Still there, still there. And then boom. Same parent. No, this is correct. This is not working. Ah, 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 ah. What am I doing wrong? What am I doing wrong? Okay, let's go back, drop inside. And these, let's leave it drop inside. If these XY is minor than X1. So what did we do before? Because I remember before we were doing uh, it's the canvas artboard drop inside. We were doing this thing. So uh, come on, so slow. Okay. Ooh, 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 canvas our board was inside here yeah but the old one load the diff uh, dropped inside okay we were doing yeah the negative let's drop inside we were doing the negative because though we were doing the negative because these bounds manager x1 x2 it was okay okay i see the problem so the bounce manager was hmm Items manager. Let me check here. What was done before? Dropped inside. Dropped inside. Yeah, is it? So mm -mm, it's not working. It's not a working idea. Artboard free item. Okay, this is completely nuts. They probably can't. Artboard X1. This is. This is bigger. This is smaller. Okay. Uh, 
Okay, instead of doing this, let's build a new method <laughs> from scratch because it's it's easier for me to to do it uh, instead of trying to overwrite a method that already exists. It's let's build something from scratch. So let's call it is uh, outside, and we want to detect if uh, an item, if items canvas item, and we got the item here. If is outside. Or is inside X, Y, yes. Is in when are we using is inside? Sorry. Okay, when we're creating, because we're only detecting X and Y, okay. Okay, so we need to do this. If Wait, 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 wait. I think I, I'm figuring it out. I'm figuring it out. I have, to, I have to actually draw something. So if X and Y are inside or Y and Y, okay. Okay, sorry guys, I think this is not, <laughs> this is not fun to watch, right? But I think I, I figured it out, or, so this should be these two conditions. And uh, let me write them in an easier way to understand here, or, The conditions always like this. Yeah, let's write them like this. Or that should be it, right? So the if the items x coordinate is minor, is smaller than the canvas x coordinate. No, it has to be bigger if it's bigger or equal to the canvas X coordinate because if the item is at zero, it's still inside. So it has to be equal and bigger. Um, and the item bounds Y, so the top, it's bigger or equal to the thing. Or if the item X, Y, so the X to the bottom, it's smaller or equal and the Y it's smaller or equal which are Y Y2 it's basically this is dropped inside yeah I think this is it right I think this is it I don't know <laughs> I don't know uh, let me give it a try. Boop. Don't do anything. 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 And boom. Ah, don't do anything. This is outside now. This should be outside. So something is correct <laughs> because we're not messing this up but it's not entirely correct because uh it's dropped inside did i change that dropped inside in the items manager did i revert to that no um it's not no and the item is dropped inside don't do anything it's correct so Okay, but if I say or okay, 
Yeah, Danny, always fun watching someone struggling with space coordinate. Yes. <laughs> okay, so I see the problem because even if we move the item, for example, outside, one of these two conditions is always correct. So if this is bigger than these two and... Um, this is smaller or is smaller mm. struggling with space coordinates this is gonna be like the worst live streaming ever <laughs> abstractly uh, okay so we got something right right because uh, I need to draw this. How can I show you? I need to. I need to draw this thing. Um, okay, let's let's use Akira to draw this thing. Right? <laughs> we we have a, a tool that works. So uh, let's do it. For example, uh, with two rectangles, so we don't interfere. And the bottom rectangle, I'm gonna paint it white and then the I'm gonna remove the border so this simulates an artboard and the inside rectangle it's just gray so this is inside because the X it's bigger than the X of the um, artboard and then the uh, X2 which is basically the extended so it's X plus the width so it's uh, uh, let's do round numbers here. Uh, so it's 300 basically, 240, 300, it's smaller than 147 plus 289. So it's like 400 and something, something, 425, 425. So this is correct because also the Y is bigger than the Y above the Y it's bigger than the Y of the container and the Y2 which is the bottom is 196 or like 200 let's do 200 uh, plus 78 it's 278 it's bigger than these like 400 and something 401 so this is correct but then at this point when we are here this still needs to be inside because these two are bigger than these, but these are bigger than these two. And this is correct. But then also here, this should be outside because these, like the top and left coordinate are smaller than the top and left coordinate. So hypothetically it's outside, but the bottom left, the bottom left and bottom right corner sorry the bottom right corner is smaller than the bottom right corner of the coordinates of the the parent container so this still should be outside but then if we move it entirely outside these two are bigger than these two the top and left are bigger than the top and left of the container but the bottom and right are bigger than the bottom right of the container. So these two, sh that should be outside. That should be outside. And same thing for here. So all these, all these four conditions should be through the, let's drop outside. So if these and is dropped outside. Dropped inside. Uh, 
But um, so Milan, maybe an old school bulls table of truth can help. Yeah, Milan says I think if the top left dot item is bigger than the bottom right of our board, then it is outside. Yes, it should be. So okay, so we need to change things. Ah, okay. So so, so uh, we can do is outside. Is outside. So we can do uh, if the item bounds. If the top left of item, so the x1, it's bigger than the bounds x2, so is the top of the item, it's bigger than the top of the arbor, it's outside. And uh, let me return these immediately. Return. Uh, and and the item bounds uh, Y1, so the top. So if the left of the item is bigger than the right of the artboard, it's outside. If the top of the item is bigger than the bottom, of the R bird, it's outside. And these two should be together. Because if those two conditions are true, oops, these two to be together. Uh, those two conditions are true, they should be out. Or Once again, copy these, bloop, plum, plum, bloop, plum, plum, and let's put it here. Or the bottom of the item is smaller than the uh, top of the canvas artboard. And the, sorry, the, if the right of the item is smaller than the left of the canvas, is outside, and the top of the item or the bottom of the item is smaller than the top of the canvas. This is maddening. <laughs> I'm losing I'm losing my mind. It is outside. So let's use these to confirm that dropped is outside. So let's make it falsy if this is not outside. Maybe if we write outside and we spell it correctly, it would be better. Is outside. Okay, that should do it, right? Don't do anything. And let's do something here. Uh, let's return it because actually let's do this. Let's comment it out because I don't want to interfere with anything else. Maybe okay, uh, boom, right, boom, okay, don't do anything. Still, don't do anything. Why don't do anything? This shouldn't. Don't do anything. Don't do anything. Uh, this shouldn't shouldn't happen because this is not outside. The items top is bigger than the bounds x two, and the items maybe instead of making it all conditionals. How can it be these? Uh, uh, the X, so the left might be bigger than the right. Okay, or bounds uh, bigger than or. Or. 
I think is I think should then this should be it right don't do anything don't do anything here ah why you're kicking in why why <laughs> god damn it <laughs> why are you kicking in the items x and y okay let's do something very simple let's simplify things okay items bound it's bigger than the i the canvas bounds x2 x2 right and let's duplicate this let's comment this out and let's make it only based on that condition so we don't mess things up if the items x1 so the item left it's bigger than the r board right they should be outside okay uh, maybe if i compile have i been compiling the whole time okay okay don't do anything because the as we can see from the uh, terminal here the item x 271 it's bigger than the r board it's not bigger than the r board x2 but if i move it here why the bounds of the artboard extend? Oh, I found the problems. Fuck. It's not the bounds of the artboard. It has to be the, the size of the artboards. Oh, I saw the problem. I found a problem. So this, I think this is a problem of the canvas group. So basically moving outside an item that belongs to a canvas group, the canvas group extends the bounds extends its bounds. Ah, <laughs> I found the issue. <laughs> okay, that's why it wasn't working. Oh, shoot. Shoot. Okay, so yeah, see, the bounds are always the same. If I push the bounds, the bounds increase with this thingy so instead of using the bounds I'm gonna use the background bounds because the R board they have the R board has a background where is it background item which is a canvas rectangle that it's binded to the width and height and as the coordinates to zero of the actual group or actually the actual item because the bounds extend but not the width so I'm gonna use the background bounds the background bounds my god <laughs> if this works if this works it's a big brain moment <laughs> yes but it's big brain <laughs> oof big brain <laughs> Jesus Christ this is embarrassing <laughs> math don't do anything. Okay, the guy, the bounds don't change. Boom! It's outside. <laughs> okay, we figured it out. <laughs> See, uh, we don't have the don't do anything thing, and this is bigger than the bounds. Okay, fuck me. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> this is brutal. Okay, uh, I can do uh, the bounds. Bounds, bounds, and bounds. Ah, oh, oof. That was... Oof. That was maddening. Okay, uh, let me... Indent. And let me indent this. And indent. Okay. And now, this is a good time to write a very, very explanatory comment because I will forget 
about this. Um, uh, detect if an item was moved outside the um, arboards. Why can I write arboards? Arboards uh, sizing limits. Let's put it this. Um, we use the background bounds instead of the art boards bounds because the actually uh, because the because the arbor bounds grow with based on the location of the child items. So if an item is outside the arbor's background, the arbor bounds will reflect the new group bounds. Does it make sense? <laughs> Ah, the moment when you realize why you should have listened in your math courses. Yes, Jesus. Well, who knew, right? Like these, like math wise, my, the first approach made sense. I didn't know that the canvas group bounds of the Goo Canvas library actually grow together when you move objects around. But that makes sense because that's how a group works. Like you have a group, if you move object around inside a group, the group boundaries and the group selection, it's still the same, like it respects the thing. So that works properly. That's, that's, yeah. So dropped inside. <laughs> okay, let's do this. Uh, if this is dropped inside, uh, Also, this should uh, use um, is outside. <sighs> okay, <laughs> so tired. <laughs> oh, God, it's just like a squished my brain to figure this shit out. Okay, uh, let's do the dropped inside thing. So if the drop inside, so if the x position, it's bigger or equal to the background well what what am i what am i writing i'm not writing the background bounds x so it's bigger and equal so if the left side is bigger and equal of the left side of the um thingy it's inside but we cannot say or because it might be that the left side is inside, but the top side is outside. So that still means it's inside this item. Or the Y is bigger than or equal than the background. So the top is bigger or equal than the background top. Dropped inside. Wow, that was brutal. Or the bounds is smaller than the background. Why is not writing? Background bounds x2 or background bounds x1 and y2. Okay, and let's copy the same description. <laughs> So this is inside is used. Yes, it's used, but we want to use also in this way the background bounds. Okay, detective an item was dropped, dropped inside the arbor size. And we use the background bounds because the arbor bounds grow based on the location of the child items. So if an item is outside the arbor's background, the arbor bounds will reflect the new group bounds. It's a mouthful, <laughs> but yeah, we did it. I think we did it. Oh, 
uh, before doing that let's re-enable this stuff so we're using is outside and if it's not outside don't do anything but if it's in outside we uh, cancel the artboard and if was dropped inside a new artboard we assign the new artboard <sighs> wow woof Woofed. What am I doing? Ninja. Sir. Okay. Moment of truth. Am I a smart man? This is still inside. This is still inside. This is still inside. This is still inside. This is outside. Yes. It's outside. It's outside. Okay. Okay. We didn't get the actually let me let me confirm that don't do anything yes don't do anything at uh, 1209 1209 17 don't do anything this is correct 1209 29 1209 34 yeah same parent 2934 the don't do anything is not okay this is one small step for alex one big step for akira <laughs> god that <laughs> okay maybe we can use this dropped inside You can use these as a foldsy as well. Yes, our board free items, it works. Okay. Okay. Mm, okay. So dropped inside, we're not using it anymore, right? Yeah, dropped inside, we're not using it. We can delete it. We're using a falsy converted to Trudy. Trudy. Oh, wow. Uh, it's time to commit. Yet <laughs> add. Yet commit. Uh, properly detect if an item is dropped inside or outside uh, our board hit push oh wow big brain moment okay uh <laughs> it's been an hour now i think i'm gonna take a break but hey lots of people uh, watching this live streaming okay uh yeah so these might not be exciting the not sound exciting but this is very exciting because by using all these built-in methods of goo canvas we were able to remove all the um extra things like extra annoying stuff of um uh, mm -mm -mm. Cairo matrix that the Cairo transformation and all these other extra things um and this allows us to go way faster if we manage to actually will manage after these massive PRs of 2000 lines of code of rework and redesign and all the architecture is done. We can move way faster because it doesn't matter if an item is inside or outside on our board, the same methods will work because we use the same components and the components are solid as hell and so good to use it. So I'm so excited. I can't wait to push this thing and, and being able to actually start implementing new features because the development of Akira was kind of stuck because those outstanding issues were present and I couldn't figure out why the rotation and the scaling doesn't work inside an R board. And the R board calculation was very messy out of just out of this world and all this strange things, but yeah. Um, Milan asks, do you have uni tests for Akira? Yes, we do. We have this beautiful folder here called tests. 
and inside here we have very very simple like uh, test the model uh, basically what we do we generate a test runner and we simply where is that test fields item yes um, we loop through the items how many items do I do that I don't remember I think a thousand items oh no only 10 for now I create only 10 items uh, because the we run these whenever we push on github the github uh, cli uh, or github ci runs this test whenever we merge it but it's very limited in computing power so if we run a thousand tests or uh, if you use a thousand items it's just uh, times out doesn't have enough room but you can extend these and run it locally so you can see how it behaves. But basically, uh, this needs to be updated because of the new things I haven't updated. What we're doing right now, for now, we're simply creating an item, selecting, changing the color, deleting the item. Creating, selecting, changing color, deleting. And we're doing like a thousand times in a second, basically, in order to stress because whenever we create and select an item, change a color, basically we are widespreading all the signals and events that are the most important of the application. This is very basic unit test and is the first one that we implemented, but we're not doing a TDD approach, a test driven development approach, because that would be insane with Vala and Akira. It's just a, such a massive application that we're literally creating things from scratch. It's not like, I'm building a Laravel application, a forum or a blog, so I know how the PHP behaves and how things should return from database so I can write a test before even coding the application. We don't know how the application will turn out because we are doing these things from scratch. These things don't exist yet. So yeah, uh, we'll see. <sighs> okay. Anyway, if you like Akira, go support it. Uh, we have a Patreon that gives you access to an exclusive, <laughs> exclusive uh, Discord channel. Uh, you can get, depends on your tier on Patreon or your support, you can get stickers or t-shirts. I, I sent out a bunch of t-shirts. Some arrived, some didn't yet because of the pandemic and some limitations and all these other strange things. But uh, nonetheless, uh, you can get some perks. Uh, otherwise, you can um, join the Matrix channel, which Danny Collin is the admin of that channel. is a beautiful, amazing guy. Uh, the link is in the description below this video. And uh, just share Akira. So, so follow us on Twitter, on Mastodon, Fostodon. Uh, just check if you want to con contribute. Just check the GitHub repository and see what's happening. But future plans in I hope for this week to finish this massive rework and merge it and after that we're gonna start focusing on uh, multi item selection grouping uh, multi fields and borders colors text editing alignment grids uh, smart guides uh, and SVG import, all the stuff that are necessary. And of course, if you're curious, you can check in the uh, GitHub repository. We have the pinned on top, the beta release wish list, all the things that we want to implement to, uh, in order to have a fully functional beta. Oh, oh so tired. That math just messed me up um, and at the end like all these features were blocked by those canvas artboard issues so now that those are figured out I'm so excited about it so yeah um, Prabin asked can you make one video for unit test yeah uh, I will I will make a video about unit test in Vala I will definitely do it but anyway Thank you so much, everyone, for joining this live streaming. Thanks for your question. Thanks for participating. Thanks for enduring my inability to do math. <laughs> but yay, <laughs> we figured it out. Okay. Uh, thank you, everyone. I'll talk to you in the next video. As usual, happy coding and enjoy open source software and Linux. Yay. Bye, guys. <laughs>